Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about a story where my friend uh, got $1,000 stolen from him. And we're also going to be giving you guys tips to avoid that happening to you. So let's get this video started. We hope you enjoy it. So for all who don't know, this is Willow. Um, she's one of our puppies. She's a great scouter for, for shows. She goes and buys all the great coins for us, and we're very happy to have her as a young numismatist on our team. She's a beast, but let's get down to the nitty gritty here. So, I watched a video by Ben the Coin Geek about uh, Instagram and Facebook people that are basically stealing money from uh, other people, and the way they do it is they basically hack accounts or they, uh, basically have bots run accounts and send you photos of coins to sell you um, for a great price or people even have uh, accounts on Facebook that they create and spend weeks generating to then sell you coins that they don't actually have so in this particular instance it was kind of strange I guess all of us or a lot of coin dealers last night on Facebook were being messaged by the same person offering us the same coins and making deals with a lot of different people and there was a few coin dealers that ended up sending this person money and then he ended up blocking them after. And what's kind of strange is that this person we've done deals with before, like, you know, I've done deals with him I think last year in August, September, but this year something has changed and we're going to give you guys just kind of hints and things you should listen to when you're having conversations with people that you worked with before and haven't worked with before. But we're one of our friends was stolen from and he ended up talking about it on social media his name's Kyle if you guys want to support Kyle I'll leave his uh, his coin business down below he sells a lot of great coins and uh, it would really be awesome if you guys can help him out losing a thousand bucks in a day is never good especially when you work so hard to get it you sell so many great coins but let's read exactly what Kyle said Kyle says for those of us who buy slash sell on social media I have been proud to say that I've been buying and selling coins and bullion on social media for the past seven years and I've never once been hacked or scammed out of a deal. I asked for references and verify them, etc. Today was different. Last night, I got a message from a guy I have bought from many times with no issue. He has a group of certified morons he wants to sell at a reasonable price. Uh, I, I buy the, the group roughly $1,000. He asked me to send the funds to his new Cash App account. This makes sense to me because previously he had me send funds to his girlfriend's cash app, which was his business. Uh, side note, I was thrown off by the fact that all of the coins photos appear to be taken in different lighting and even appear to be in someone else's hand. So I asked for a video of the coins. He provided a video also. So I sent the funds to the cash app account. I wake up this morning and learned that his Facebook account has been hacked and he got many people with the same exact scheme. And the photos he was alluding to were photos that I personally taken when I sold the coins to this person. So I sold the coins to this guy like, like I said, about eight or nine months ago. And he just used those photos to sell them now. And that's pretty common. That happens a lot with stuff that I do just because our photos are pretty decent. They're in a nice lit, lit space. And uh, let's continue reading what Kyle said here. He said, I believe this scam was orchestrated by someone that knew coins. They were priced right. He wasn't willing to give them away and maybe even had the coins in hand. Or he got lucky and happened to have a video of the coin I requested. Perhaps stolen from another Facebook post somewhere else. It's, it's a tough reality, but we can no longer just accept reference checks in the wild west of Facebook coin groups. I would have vouched for this guy in any reference check. Additional measures must be taken. I recommend never assuming you are dealing with the man slash woman you think you are. If you have to send payment up front, do a video call or somehow verify the coins and the seller are true. It's great, it's great to have this group where everyone has a base level of trust and reputation and deals can be paid on delivery most of the time. Please keep my story in, in mind moving forward. I'm happy um, it was only a thousand dollars when he likely have got me for well more any thoughts slash recommendations encouraged so I ended up talking with Kyle after this whole thing happened and 
basically he was saying that someone hacked this kid's account and then he was messaging us saying, hey, you know, can I sell you these coins? Yada, yada, yada. But the thing that didn't work with me is that basically I sold these coins to this kid on Instagram. And he took those photos from Instagram and used them on a Facebook messenger to talk to Kyle. So a lot of working parts at once, but me personally, I don't think this was somebody else. I think this was just somebody down on their luck and they needed some money and Kyle was uh, the victim for it. And so let's talk about some tips, some red flags, some things you guys should consider if you're buying online. Um, and just to, for you guys to know, we use PayPal and Wix payments on all of our, all of our coins that we sell on our website and those basically have buyer protection. So if I don't deliver in any way, shape or form, you can get your money back. And that's something that most of you guys that haven't done stuff online should consider. But let's talk about some tips. We hope you guys enjoy these. So the first tip that I would uh, prescribe for you guys is in any situation that you're not working with someone that you know and have been doing business for for a long time and they're very financially stable, if you aren't working with those people, I would recommend using PayPal. And the only real reason is because the seller has to cover um, a surcharge on on the, uh, the purchase, which is about three and a half to four percent. And basically, what that does is it protects you, it insulates you as a buyer in case the item isn't shipped or the item never arrives at your house. And and so if Kyle did use PayPal and he sent him the $1,000, next day he could say, I, he could orchestrate a claim, basically saying that this person blocked me, I don't think this package is gonna arrive. And then in about few, in three or four weeks, he got his money back. And so the re main reason why I say use PayPal is because uh, Kyle used Cash App. In Cash App, you really can't get your money back. Venmo, you can't get your money back unless you use goods and services on there. And so there's a lot of those feeless, um, di different ways of payment. But what the way I see it is that if the coin's worth it to you, you really should go through a, a place where you can be fully insulated. And so sometimes I even have to pay the surcharge as the buyer because the, the seller doesn't want to. And so when I pay that 4%, that's insulating me. And so say that 4% is $25 on a really expensive transaction, a $500 transaction. Me paying that $25 is basically me saying that I want to protect that $500. So there's always that trade off, right? So if I'm paying $25 for a $500 item, that $25 is my peace of mind. That $25 is my insurance in case nothing, in case something happens to the coin or something uh, with the seller kind of breaks loose like this one did. And so I like to be on the safe side and that's the way that you should do it as well. But that's kind of my tip for tip number one. Just use PayPal and pay the money if you have to, even if you have to cover the surcharge because you at the end of the day are gonna be the one hurt by it. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go on to tip number two. The second tip I would offer to somebody, um, and what we use all the time, is that if you have the street credit, which basically means uh, I've been selling on Instagram, I've been selling at, on, at shows, I've been selling on Facebook, I think for about two years now. And so, I have the street credit to use this other option that's not PayPal. So say someone offers me 10 coins, 15 coins on our website. What I tell them is that once the coins arrive at my house, I will send them a check personally. And so this is a different way and this is basically uh, a, way, a way where I can't be hurt in any form or fashion because I can check and inspect the coins when they arrive. I can also make sure that this person's selling me something that they said they were gonna sell me. Another thing that you should consider when you are either sending coins to somebody or sending a check to somebody is that you can do it vice, or vice versa. And uh, basically what that means is we've had guys that say, can I pay with a check? Can I pay with a money order? All those things uh, we've also accepted. 
And basically how that works for us is that we would say once the check arrives and which is once it's fully processed through our bank, then we'll send you the coin. And so we what we do, especially with checks, is that we tell them up front. Once the check arrives, it takes about 10 days for it to be fully processed. And after that time, and when we give given a call to our bank, then we'll send you the coin. And so using that also as a fail safe is a great thing because once again, you're fully insulated as a dealer or as a collector. Um, and so that's, you know, that's tip number two. We hope that helps you guys. And the way that you can really get this to get going is that if you start posting on social media, uh, you know, about coins that you're passionate about or make kind of interesting content um, for people to know you by, then you can start getting that street cred to do this. Tip number three is watch for red flags. And uh, Kyle didn't see the red flags that I saw, so the same person actually messaged me before Kyle. We agreed to a deal on the same coins for $850. And the things that he was kind of telling me gave me red flags, and this is what you should recognize in anybody that you're working with. The guy basically said, hey, I'm low on my money, I'm only down to my last 100 bucks, um, can you send the money right now, tonight? They were pushing the timeline up. A lot of things felt rushed. If you ever feel rushed in a certain deal, you really should tell them that you're not interested or you use the two fail safes that I talked about earlier, either PayPal or check on uh, when they arrive. And so what I said to this kid was basically, hey, sorry you're down on your luck. I know you need the money, but the only way this is gonna work is if you send me the coins and then I send you a check. Because when I first started reading the conversation, he said, oh man, I need your, I need help, I don't have any money. And you know, that's just somewhere where you know, I, I feel bad for the guy. Um, but ultimately we have to, what you have to understand is that when, some, when he actually bought these coins from me, he was in a great financial state. And now that he's selling them back and he's in a bad financial state, things have changed. Um, and so, he, you know a person when they're in a good financial state is what I'm saying, and then when they transition to a f bad financial state, they can do things that they wouldn't have done if they were in a good financial state, if that makes sense. And so this person, being in the financial state that they were, they wanted to take advantage of other people, and that's something that they might have not have done if they had the money um, to take care of their bills or other responsibilities. So what I would say is watch out for red flags. Another thing that I would, uh, you know, consider is that if they don't offer goods and services or PayPal as a form of payment, um, and this really has to do with uh, Instagram or with Facebook, if they don't offer goods and services, that's a red flag on itself. Uh, basically, what they're telling you without telling you is that they don't want you to be insulated as a buyer. They want to get as much money as they can, but at the same time, they don't want to be, uh, you know, they don't want to have any liability against them. And there's really nothing that much most people can do uh, about people taking money from other people, especially when goods and services isn't used. But let's go on to tip number four. So the final tip that I would give you guys is that you need references. And Kyle alluded to this a little bit on his post. He said that I would have, I would have been uh, vouching for this guy because I've known him, I've done business with him, yada yada yada, and that's you know that is very important, um, and that's something that doesn't really apply to this tip because, like I said, he knew the guy and something changed in his life, and that made him want to go after Kyle's money. But if you're working with someone that's brand new, what I would say is look for references. And this is not no references from someone that they know that's a family member or a fake account they created as, as a reference. I've actually seen people on Facebook create 10, 15, 20 accounts. So when someone asks for references, they pull those 20 accounts out and they say, oh, great guy, I've done business with them, yada, yada, yada. Those are not references in my opinion. What I would say are real references are people that are wholesalers, people that spend millions of dollars a month on coins that know everybody and uh, you can basically call them on the phone. Uh, a few great people that I would 
kind of recognize is like Kyle, but I would also uh, recognize Chris Dempsey, a lot of great kind of wholesalers that are in the north and in the south. And so use those connections that you know of, even call your local coin shop. They may have worked with these people before. Uh, all these things are very important, especially when you're buying online. And uh, yeah, we hope this tip helps you also. So what's the purpose of me saying all these tips? What's the purpose of me saying this story? The purpose of all this basically is to drive home the fact that going virtual with buying and selling is gonna happen and we're all gonna have to get used to it. And in certain, certain circumstances, we're gonna have to implement certain safeguards uh, for your collecting and for your finances. And so providing this video today, really, uh, we hope it helps you. We hope it helps uh, your collecting journey. If you guys have any questions for us, please leave them in the comments below. If you guys wanna see more videos like this helping you uh, with certain tips, please leave a like. And uh, yeah, comment your thoughts down below. Um, we really do like your, your feedback and uh, subscribe if you're new. But And we hope you guys have a great rest of your day.